Hi class, I was gonna talk about the Raspberry Pi really quick. So I've actually got a five inch LCD that uses HDMI. So it's HDMI and power. Uh, the Raspberry Pi has got my keyboard plugged in. This is a USB GPS, this is the OBD, and there's an IMU plugged in that I don't have working at the moment, uh, but will work. This is the GPS unit. Uh, this one is like $10 on eBay. It's wired up to the USB pins. It's a U-Blox chipset. Uh, it's a Neo 7. Uh, if you're curious, uh, this little module is just enough for me to see that the uh, LED is blinking. And it, it's hard to tell online or in the video, but it's blinking at about 10 hertz. Uh, the script actually programs it to 10 hertz mode when it boots up. Seems to be working. Uh, you can see I've changed the pinout to the logging trigger in the LED. This is more friendly to uh, the 5 inch uh, LCD if you add it. The switch is on the very bottom corner. Uh, I think that's 37 and 39. Uh, then you skip two up uh, and then this is the LED. Uh, the LED gets triggered by the Python script whenever, uh, whenever the logging switch is enabled and this is a, uh, a latching switch so up is not logging the light goes off you press it down it detects it and then it starts logging uh, if you look down on the screen I've actually got the logging folder pulled up which is under home pi pi obd pi slash log and while the switch is activated uh, you should be able to watch the application log right here uh, that's the latest file, the very top one. Uh, the log file will actually be increasing in size whenever it's activated, so that's a, a good way to tell if it's working properly and which file that it's actually writing to. Uh, the Pi does not have a real-time clock, so if you don't have internet access, the time on the Pi uh, may not be correct, and your order of log files may be kind of screwed up. Uh, that's something to work on for future reference. Um, anyway, uh, so that's plugged in, and then down here you can see the light blinking on the OBD adapter, so we know we have a connection, and that's working. Now if we look back at the screen, uh, let's take a look at the terminal. I think we have a terminal open, or maybe not. I don't have a terminal open. Anyway, uh, I'll get to another screen, but at this point, you should know that it is working and it's it's logging. If we if we double click on the log file itself, you can see on the left we've got our uh, OBD channels, the five, first five channels that are there. And if you keep scrolling along, we get to some GPS channels. So there's latitude, longitude. Uh, a speed which is in miles an hour I believe I need to check the calibration uh, a track which is basically a, a heading more or less uh, and then uh, the mode and the mode field um, if I can get to the very end of the line the mode field should just tell you whether it's not got a lock it's 1d or uh, 3d so uh, just a quick video showing what's going on this is like the if you look on Amazon it's about 35 bucks for this uh, LCD it does have a resistive touch screen if it's plugged directly into the Pi but uh, and then also it does work even if you don't do any configuration on the Pi uh, so if I take this HDMI and plug in a TV I'll get full HD if you plug into this monitor it, it only does 640 by 480. Um, if you modify the config.txt file in the root of the folder, you can force it to 800 by 480, and that would fix this right part of the screen, but this is enough for me to use it, and I don't have to uh, mess with the configuration for now. Uh, so this actually, I would recommend if you want to play around with it, um, and Amazon had them in stock. They're like $33. I'll, uh, that, that's the link that's on, on the class page. If you have any questions, call me. Uh, this script, like the way this is set up, um, once you configure cron, C-R-O-N, 
uh, Kron calls uh, launcher gps.sh and launcher gps.sh is the uh, is a bash script it's kind of like a batch file uh, it opens the Python uh, obd gps log 2.py so the obd gps 2 is the latest um, the latest python file to mess with I'll, I'll make that update on the uh, net so uh, the easiest way to get this thing going is going to be the button and uh, I've modified the code so it's a bit more robust uh, but feel free to check that out ask me some questions and uh, we'll go from there so hope everybody's making some progress on this and uh, we'll take it to uh, Zmax later.